to Legacy Church Online. If you're watching us on the live service, on the live stream, or whether you're watching one of the catch-up ones that are on our YouTube channel, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope you have a blessed time. We're beginning our service today with a bit of time of praise and worship. And earlier today, as I was thinking about the songs we're going to be singing, one question really popped into my mind, which was, would you be willing to die for someone else? Now, was someone that you loved, then, yeah. But what about a total stranger? Mm, maybe. How about someone who doesn't like you or absolutely hates you? Mm, it's pretty difficult. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He came down from heaven and died for each and every one of us. Whether it's a person who loves God, whether it's a person that hates him, or someone who doesn't really think about him at all. Even when he was on the cross, hanging there, dying in complete agony, as people stood around him laughing and mocking him, he still asked that they were forgiven. That was the sort of love that Jesus showed for every single one of us. And this leads us into our first song, I Am of Reckless Love. Now, some people you know, have a little bit of discussion about whether or not reckless is the best word for God's love. But at, from a human point of view, and as someone who's arguably fairly reasonable, at least I think I'm reasonable, you know, it's pretty much out there, that sort of love. But that's exactly what he, the love he showed. He put each, each one of us before himself, came down, took upon himself the sins and the punishment for those sins so that we wouldn't have to. Just on the chance that we might turn around and accept his love and his forgiveness in return. So let's worship him now.
We are believing that this year we'll see changes from 2021 and we will conquer new horizons in this coming year. Over the last four weeks, we have been looking at how God is with us when we're in the valleys of life. He is with us when we're in the wilderness and he is with us in the storms of life. We will all be there at some point in our lives. So it is good to remind ourselves that as a believer, the God who created this universe will be with us through all these things, through all these circumstances. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. But this morning I want you to think about this coming year. We're going to think about the year ahead and what you would like to see God do in your life in the next 12 months. Perhaps there are things that you've been battling or struggling with for some time and you would like to see a breakthrough. You may be seeking the Lord for a breakthrough in your health or your work situation or your family, your relationships, or perhaps you are seeking the Lord for a breakthrough as you battle some sort of addiction. Our God is able to set us free from everything, including addictions, even addictions to food. He can open doors. He can make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. He's there to heal us, to protect us, and to set up divine encounters. He wants to meet with us. We are continuing to pray for healing in David's eyes. My husband, he's, his eyes, he's got a problem with his eyes, and we're continuing to pray and seek the Lord about that. He needs a breakthrough. He needs a supernatural intervention of God. As we search the scriptures, we find that many people fasted and prayed when they wanted a breakthrough. So this morning, we're going to look at a couple of people in the Bible who fasted and prayed, and they experienced an amazing breakthrough. If you want to restore your intimacy with God, or you want to grow deeper in your relationship with the Lord, fasting can help you to do that. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you have given us this facility of fasting and praying that we might seek your face, that we might come closer to you. I just pray, O oh God, as I share this message this morning, that people will not see me, but they'll see you, that they'll hear your voice. 
speaking to them. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, I'm going to talk about what is fasting. What is fasting? I know that some of you will probably already know what fasting is, but it's defined as a partial or total abstention from all foods or a select abstention from prohibited foods. And there are many, many ways that we can fast. It can be a very individual thing. We can do a partial fast by going without certain foods such as meat, desserts, sweets, coffee, alcohol or anything else that you might crave. Or you can fast and go without foods and just have water that, as, a, as we've been doing in a three day fast. Then you have to decide if it will be a one off, like if it will be just one day or one meal or you may want to do it a couple of days or you may want to do it one day for three weeks as we approach the camp over these next three weeks we want to fast and pray so let's first of all have a look at some examples in the Bible there are lots of examples in the Bible but I just want to talk about three first of all Jesus fasted for 40 days and I'm not suggesting that we do what he did after his baptism he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. Jesus was tempted just like we are, but yet he was victorious. He used the Word of God as his weapon, and he also was fasting so that he was able to defeat the enemy. And in Hebrews we read, For we do not have a high priest, that is Jesus, who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but... We have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So what a wonderful example for us. The second one is Daniel in the Old Testament. He fasted for 10 days. He had a different situation. When the Israelites went into exile to Babylon, amongst them were Daniel and his three friends. They were chosen because they were from a royal family or of nobility and the chief official was told to select these young men and it says in Daniel 1, 4 to 5, it says, select only strong, healthy and good looking young men, he said. Make sure they are well versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years and then they would enter the royal service. However, there was a problem. They were going to get this delicious food um, and they were going to be served food from the royal kitchen but there was a problem. The food that they were going to have was considered contaminated by the Israelites. Why? Because the first portion was offered to idols and ceremonially unclean animals were used. And also with the wine, a portion of it was poured out on a pagan altar. Daniel did not want to defile himself in this way by eating the royal food and drinking the wine. But the chief official was afraid of the king because he had assigned the food. However, God gave Daniel and his friends favour with this chief official. And Daniel's request to the chief official was, please test us for 10 days, just 10 days, on a diet of vegetables and water. At the end of these 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the other young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. And we get the term Daniel fast from this scripture where Daniel just ate vegetables and water. So this is one way of fasting is just going without, all other, going without all other things and just having vegetables and water. Because Daniel looked better than the others 
who were training in the king's court. So this is just one way to fast. Another example is Queen Esther. She also fasted, but this was an absolutely total fast of food, all food and water. She had been taken force by, she had been taken by force among a number of other beautiful young women to see who would become the next queen. Esther finally was selected and became the queen, but she had an enemy, Haman, because he was out to destroy all Jews, which would mean Esther as well. And of course, the king's court didn't realise that Esther was a Jew. She calls a total fast for all the Jews living in Susa, that they would fast for her as she worked out a plot to expose Haman and his wicked plans. She was successful as God worked out a miracle and Haman was actually finally hung on the gallows that he had erected for Esther's uncle. I don't think that would have happened if Esther had not called all the Jews to fast. I believe they sought the Lord and the Lord heard and listened and he provided a miracle there. This is, these are three examples of um, types of fasts that we can choose, a meal a day or days in a week. There are many different types of fasts. So I, I would suggest to you, ask God, when you have your quiet time, journal and ask the Lord, what sort of fast does he want you to do? Or perhaps you already know when you're, when you're listening to this, maybe he's already putting in your mind what you should do. The second thing we're going to look at is why would we fast? What are some of the benefits? What are some of the things that come out of fasting? Well, usually as a believer, we fast for a spiritual breakthrough of some sort. We want a closer walk with God. Or it may be fasting for healing or direction in life. Or we may be seeking God for answers to problems and situations. Or seeking Him for strength to overcome sin. There are many things that we reasons why we might want to fast. Jesus assumed that we would fast. And in Matthew 6, 16 to 18, we read, And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they look, try to look miserable and disheveled, so people would, would, will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward that they will ever get. But... When you fast, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. Notice here that Jesus didn't say, if you fast, do this, but rather he said, when you fast. Jesus assumed that we would all be fasting. Will you consider fasting as we prepare our hearts for camp. We want to be people with open hearts to God's voice. We want to be people that come to camp expecting and anticipating that God is going to move supernaturally in our life. So then you have to decide what sort of fast that you will do. Let's just have a look at 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says there, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. When we fast, we actually have to humble ourselves. We humble ourselves because we are saying to God, we need you. We need you for this breakthrough. And if we pray and seek the Lord and turn from our wicked ways, he promises to hear from heaven and to forgive our sin and to heal the land. What, what an amazing promise that is. Now I just want to look for a few moments at the benefits of fasting. Fasting results not only in spiritual benefits, but physical benefits. Fasting is almost like a body house cleaning. And there has been a lot of medical research done on the benefits of fasting, that is the physical benefits. In a three-day water fast, the body rids itself of diseased tissue, excess calories, and accumulation of toxins. They are swept away in a fast. 
and medical research has shown that a three-day fast will actually completely reboot the immune system. There is also evidence that fasting can reduce tumours, which I find really amazing. In fact, one article said that fasting can be as effective as chemotherapy in certain tumours. But the greatest benefit of fasting is intimacy with Jesus. Seeking him and expecting him to move in our life. Having a divine encounter with him. Fasting was a normal part of the early church. And we read in Acts where before Barnabas and Saul set off on their first mission trip, the believers were praying and fasting. We read in Acts 13, 1 to 3, Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them, so that after they have fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. They were fasting because they wanted to know, I guess, where Barnabas and Saul should go or whether they should go. These disciples were seeking the will of God. As they fasted and prayed, the Holy Spirit spoke to them about Barnabas and Saul going off on their missions trip. We find fasting difficult today for various reasons, for a number of reasons, but I do know that there are a small minority of believers who still do fast because in fasting we can see breakthroughs. I know for me, when I'm fasting, I, I find that I miss my morning coffee because I have a coffee a day and when I'm fasting, of course, I'm going without coffee and I really miss that coffee. It's difficult. It's hard. Fasting is not easy. God wants us to be set free from all things that would hold us back. He wants us to have control over our life. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said in chapter 9, he said, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is figurative language here. And Jesus is describing, and Paul, sorry, is describing the Christian life. He's saying he doesn't beat aimlessly in the air. But he disciplines his own body as he served Jesus. So we are not, we also are not to drift aimlessly through life, but we are to live a life of discipline, not on how we feel, not on our emotions, but on obedience as we follow Jesus. Fasting and praying now may change the course of your life in future. Maybe if you're slightly off target, it can get you back on target. It's also a place where we become more sensitive to the voice of God. And as we approach the church camp at the end of the month, I encourage you to consider fasting and praying that God would prepare our hearts, that he would move supernaturally at camp. We want to have lots of fun at the camp, and I know that we will, absolutely. But we also want to come away from the camp having met with God. There is nothing that is more exciting than experience a touch from God. So if you decide to fast, it may be doing a Daniel fast and just having vegetables and water for a period of time. Or it may be going without, say, coffee and desserts. Also, if you choose to fast one day a week or if you have, if you, if you have never fasted before, Perhaps you may like to fast just one evening a meal or just start with one day and maybe just do without coffee and desserts or something like that. Just be sensible. Use common sense as you start fasting. It's something that I think we have to ease ourselves into. 
My husband David and I have done a three-day water fast earlier in the week as we prayed for the camp. But I have to say, it really is not easy. I was craving for a coffee or a snack. But we decided that we wanted to seek the Lord about the camp. We made a decision and so we did it. And it's good because we had each other to, to encourage each other in that. And so when we fast, it is not based on how we feel. Each week, we will fast and we invite you to join us in some way. You choose how you're going to fast. The bottom line is our attitude. Do we want to meet with God and see him move in our own life and the life of our church? If you haven't fasted for a while or you've never fasted, I just suggest, as I said before, just fasting maybe one meal or just going without maybe coffee or desserts or something like that. I would encourage you to join with us and to fast because we're believing that God is going to do some amazing things at this camp. He calls us to pray. As, he, as we pray, it opens the door for God to work. And when we crave things, which when we're on a fast and we're craving things, it is a reminder for us to pray. So we can kind of just start praying wherever we are and just praying for the things that we, we need to pray for. So I encourage you, I just invite you and encourage you to join with us praying over these next three weeks and fasting as we do that. Also, on a Thursday night, we're going to have a Zoom prayer time. So that will also be good. And I invite you to join with us in that time. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you want to meet with us, that you want to break through in our lives to make changes and transform us into the person that you want us to be. And Lord, we do set aside this time, this next three weeks, as we seek your face. Lord God, that you would prepare our hearts Lord, that you would open our hearts to whatever it is that you want to do in our lives as we go to camp this in three weeks' time. So, Father, I just uh, commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you may be, you may be watching and we, we're going to have a um, Zoom prayer and we're going to have a chat and stuff. So, there's going to be a Zoom prayer link that comes up on the screen i invite you to just click on that and come into our zoom room so that we can chat and pray together thank you Yeah. 
Surrender. 